Hi software, uh, welcome to video two of your first day back coding in the editor. The first video went over how to find files, including files with transparent backgrounds, how to save files locally to a file that we can always find, and how to name files in a way that's going to be really friendly and compliant with our code. If you haven't watched that video, especially the parts on naming, please go watch that video now. In order to complete this one, you need to have at least one image file saved locally. Um, so if you don't have that, you're gonna to need to pause, go do that, and then come back. If you're ready, we're going to figure out how to put that local file into our program and how to get it to display on our canvas. Um, and just again, as a reminder, unlike normal code alongs, there's gonna be no long gap where I'm not saying anything so that you guys can do things. Sometimes I'm gonna remind you to pause, but sometimes you guys need to just understand that's something you wanna try, so maybe you should pause the video and go do it. I strongly advise that you are doing everything I am doing along with the video, and you're not trying to watch the whole video and then go replicate it all on your own, because I think that's gonna be really confusing and you're probably gonna end up really lost. Um, okay, so to get started, I have opened a new sketch. I have logged into my account. If you are not logged in, I just learned from take one of filming this, that it's not going to work correctly. So make sure you're logged in to start. Um, and I just have this blank sketch. I might rename it something useful like um, intro to adding images or something so you know how to find it. Um, then over here on the side, we're going to be very interested in this little arrow that until now we've been ignoring. If I click this arrow, it pops out a bunch of hidden files that P5 has just been keeping from you because you don't need to know them to do what we've been doing. Um, you'll see that what it's selecting now is sketch.js. That's where we have been living. That's where we're always going to live. It's where we write our JavaScript code. But JavaScript doesn't really exist well on its own. JavaScript always works together with HTML and CSS, which are what build out static web pages. So if I click on index.html, you see a bunch of HTML that maybe you looks familiar from being in software one or from other parts of life. Um, this stuff at the beginning, and I can even make my text a little bigger for you guys, is all stuff that allows me to use P5 in the canvas. Um, down in the body tag, this is what allows my canvas to actually show up on the screen. Um, and if you guys would like to learn more HTML or you would like to build these out into fuller websites, you're welcome to chat with me about it. I'm happy to help you or help you find resources so that you can learn how to do that. Um, if I click on style.css, this is what styles my page. Not much is happening yet. Um, and honestly, we probably won't get to a lot of CSS this year. But again, if you're looking for an extension, you want an opportunity to throw some exceedings in your grade, please chat with me. I will help you figure out both HTML and CSS. All right, back up in Sketch. We're clicking on Sketch. We're gonna start adding images to our program. And in order to do that, we're gonna click down on this arrow and we see that we have three options. That arrow, by the way, is next to Sketch Files. We have the option to create a folder, create a file, and upload a file. Now we're not making images from scratch here. Um, it's not something that we're like coding the image for. And we could make folders if we want. That's gonna change, it'll help you stay organized, but it will also change how you call the images into your program. So if you are someone who thinks you need folders, please reach out to me so I can review that with you. For most of us, we're just gonna focus on uploading files. So that's what we're gonna click. And you are going to see that when you click that, um, you have to click like right on the words, otherwise it's not gonna work. This box pops up and it asks you to drop files or click to use the browser, I would strongly recommend you click. Um, the drag and drop doesn't always work in P5. Okay, so once I click, I am in my Morgan Images folder because I did this in take one. Most of you will probably see that you're like on your desktop or maybe you're even in downloads or some other folder. Um, you wanna navigate to where that folder is where we put everything. So mine is in the desktop, so I'm clicked on desktop. I'm gonna go to where it says Morgan Images and then I can either double click which will take me to like a page with just my images, or I can click this arrow down to expand what's in it. And here I see the three things I saved. Weird picture of my cat, two pictures of puppies. I'm gonna pick just the one that says puppy.jpg. I'm gonna click open. And it's gonna load into my program. So this is where things get a little weird. Um, you're gonna see that like this bar goes through and it looks like it's done. You're also gonna see on the side puppy.jpg adds, but this upload box is just gonna sit there. 
as long as you see your file on the side here, you're good. And once it's there, you can hit X and we can move on. If you have not uploaded your file yet, this is a great time to pause this video, go to your program, upload your image into the program so you can make sure you have it. Um, if that does not apply to you, if you've already done it, then we're just going to move right along. So in order to get our image into the um, canvas, we need somewhere to hold on to and store our image, and that involves making a variable. So we want to make a variable to store image, um, and we're going to make that ahead of all the functions because I want to be able to utilize that variable in multiple of those major callback functions. So this is a picture of a puppy. I'm going to call it pup pick. So I'm going to say var pup pick. And then for now, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to set it equal to anything. Um, I'm just going to leave it where it is. And part of the reason why I'm doing this is we're actually introducing a new callback function called preload. Um, preload makes sure that things load to your program before your program runs. So this is going to become more apparent why we care about this when we get to our animation unit. If you're animating a bunch of images, um, you want the images to actually be there before the motion starts happening. So preload is going to run before anything, even before setup, and it's just going to get the data into our program so we can use it later. So function preload looks like this. It starts with the word function, just like setup and draw. And just like setup and draw, it happens separate from everything else. So it's not inside setup, it's not inside draw, it's happening on its own. Um, and I'm going to write function preload. Preload is all one word. There are no spaces, there are no capitalizations, there are no dashes, just preload. Um, and just like everything else, I have parentheses, nothing is going in them. And then the computer needs to know where preload begins and ends. So it starts with a curly brace, it ends with a curly brace. Now in preload, we are going to um, assign images to variables using load image, which is a function you guys are going to see right now. Um, so the way this looks, I have my variable called pup pick. I'm going to, in here, call my variable, and I'm going to give it a value, which is one single equal sign. And the value I'm going to give it is the result of this function load image. So load image is a function that means it has parentheses after it. And the only thing that load image takes in is the name of the image. Because computers are just matching these things, this is something that goes in quotes. The computer does not know what the name of my image is outside of quotes. And it's something that needs to be typed exactly. So that's why in the first video we talked so much about naming. If you don't name your image well, um, it's going to be really hard to do this. So I'm going to open up my quotes and I'm going to type the name of my image exactly, which is puppy. And it's not just puppy, it has a file extension. So it's puppy.jpg. And that .jpg is what tells the computer, this is a picture, treat it like a picture. Um, if you have something that's not .jpg, .png, .tff, .bit, uh, it's probably not going to show up as an image. So I've gone ahead, gone ahead and loaded this. If this is something you haven't done yet, please pause here. Go do that in your own program. Um, and then just try hitting play. And you should notice that you get the background that you set. It creates a canvas. It gives it a color but you don't get an actual image of a puppy. Um, and this makes perfect sense because we've loaded the image into our program, but we haven't told the computer where to put it. So in order to place the image inside of draw, um, or I guess you could do this inside of setup too if you didn't want to have a background, you're going to call image. And the first thing you're going to do is um, tell the computer what image you want to use. And I want to use the image that's inside my variable, which is called puppy pick. So I'm going to type, oh, I'm sorry, pup pick. That's what I called it, right? Yep. I'm going to call it pup pick. And then I, the computer needs to know where to place this. So I'm going to put my first picture just up in the corner at the origin here. Um, and I'm going to hit play. And you'll see that it loads. And then the puppy is there. And this puppy picture is very, very large. So if I don't want it to take up quite this much room, I might give it a different um, height and width. So I'm going to give it a height and width of 300 and 400 and hit play. And now I have this little squishy puppy who's very cute but also getting very squishy. Um, and I can keep resizing those numbers so that he resizes. So again, this image function is always going to be image, variable name, x, y, width, and height. 
Um, and just to test this, if I didn't want this running all the time in draw, this is absolutely something that could be done in setup, um, which might make life a little bit easier on my program, but that is completely not necessary to happen. I would probably need to comment all this out to prove that to you. Um, that doesn't need to happen. That's just, you know, an option you can play with if you're trying to layer things in an interesting way like we saw in our draw program. Um, so that is about it for putting images in. Again, our steps are we need to make a variable. That variable happens outside of every other function. We need to add function preload. Preload has no uppercase letters. It has no spaces. Um, it does have parentheses. It does have an opening and closing bracket. And in preload, we are loading in all of our images. Then down below in draw or in setup, if we remove the background, we are loading, we are displaying that image with the image function. Now, if I wanted to add another image, I would be doing that the same way I did the first, but I would not add another preload function, only one preload function at a time. So let's say I want to add um, a picture of my cat. I'm going to call this bar cat. I'm going to go through the same process where I click this arrow. I'm going to upload a file. I'm going to put in my picture of pod. That's my cat. It's going to load. And then once it has loaded, I see it over here. I know it's there. I'm going to close it. In preload, I'm not making a new preload. I am just going to write cat equals load image. And I'm typing the name exactly, which is mostpod.jpg and I'm making sure it winds up in quotes. If I wanted this image to display down here, I could say cat, 100, 100, 200, 200. And now I also have an image of my cat and an image of my puppy. Um, this is where the transparent background thing comes in handy. It's very annoying to see these boxes laid over each other. I think it looks pretty bad actually. Um, so probably the next time you see me filming a video, I will be using images with transparent backgrounds. Um, so today is yours to play. Try and upload more of your own videos, uh, or more of your own images, I'm sorry, into a program. Make sure you know how to do it. And once you feel comfortable, go through and answer all the questions that are in classroom so I can give you guys some feedback. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys make tomorrow. Bye.